Book One, The Argument, Minerva's Descent to Ithaca. The poem opens within 48 days of the arrival of Ulysses in his dominions. He had now remained seven years in the island of Calypso when the gods assembled in council, proposed the method of his departure from thence and his return to his native country. For this purpose, it is concluded to send Mercury to Calypso, and Pallas immediately descends to Ithaca. She holds a conference with Telemachus in the shape of Mantes, king of Taphians, in which she advises him to take a journey in quest of his father Ulysses, to Pylos and Sparta, where Nestor and Menelaus yet reigned, then, after having visibly displayed her divinity, disappears. The suitors of Penelope make great entertainments and riot in her palace till night. Phemius sings to them the return of the Grecians till Penelope puts a stop to the song. Some words arise between the suitors and Telemachus, who summons the council to meet the day following. The man for wisdom's various arts renowned, long exercised in woes, O Muse, resound, who, when his arms had wrought the destined fall of sacred Troy, and raised her heaven-built wall, wandering from clime to clime, observant strayed, their manners noted, and their states surveyed, on stormy seas unnumbered toils he bore, safe with his friends to gain his natal shore. Vain toils, their impious folly dared to prey on herds devoted to the god of day. The god vindictive doomed them nevermore, amen and blessed. Do touch that natal shore, O snatch some portion of these acts from fate, celestial muse, and to our world relate. Now at their native realms the Greeks arrived, all who the wars of ten long years survived. And scaped the perils of the gulfy main, Ulysses' soul of all the victor train, and exile from his dear paternal coast, Deplored his absent queen and empire lost. Calypso in her caves constrained his stay with sweet reluctant amorous delay. In vain for now the circling years disclose the day predestined to reward his woes. At length his Ithaca is given by fate, where yet new labors his arrival wait. At length their rage the hostile powers restrain, all but the ruthless monarch of the main. But now the god remote, a heavenly guest, in Ethiopia graced the genial feast, genial feast, a race divided whom with sloping rays the rising and descending sun surveys. There on the world's extremest verge, revered with hecatombs and prayer and pomp preferred, distant he lay while in the bright abodes of high Olympus. Jove convened the gods, the assembly thus the sire supreme addressed. Aegisthus' this, this fate revolving in his breast, whom young Orestes to the dreary coast of Pluto sent, a blood-polluted ghost. Perverse mankind, whose wills created free, charge all their woes on absolute degree. All to the dooming gods their guilt translate, and follies are miscalled, the crimes of fate. When to his lustus Aegisthus gave the rein. Did fate or we the adulterous act constrain? Did fate or we, when great Atreides died, urge the blood traitor to regicide? Hermes I sent, while yet his soul remained, sincere from royal blood and faith provane, to warn the wretch that young Orestes, grown to manly years, should reassert the throne. Yet impotent of mind and uncontrolled, he plunged into the gulf with which heaven foretold. He paused the god, and pensive thus replies, Minerva, graceful with her azure eyes, O thou from whom the whole creation springs, the source of power on earth derived to kings, his death that was equal to the direful deed, so may the man of blood be doomed to bleed, but grief and rage alternate, wound my breast. 
for brave Ulysses, still by fate oppressed, amidst an isle around whose rocky shore the forests murmur and the surges roar, the blameless hero from his wished-for home a goddess guards in her enchanted dome. Atlas, her sire, to whose far-piercing eye the wonders of the deep expanded lie, the eternal columns which on earth he rears in the starry vault and prop the spheres. By his fair daughter is the chief confined, who soothes to dear delight his anxious mind. Successless, all her soft caresses prove, to banish from his heart his country's love, to see the smoke from his loved palace rise, while the dear isle in distant prospect lies. With what contentment could he close his eyes, and will omnipotence neglect to save the suffering virtue of the wise and brave? Must he whose altars on the Phrygian shore with frequent rites and pure avowed thy power, be doomed the worst of human ills to prove, unblessed abandoned to the wrath of Jove? Daughter, what words have passed thy lips unweighted? Replied the thunderer to the martial maid, Deem not unjustly by my doom oppressed of human race the wisest and the best. Neptune, by prayer repentant, rarely won, afflicts the chief to avenge his giant son, whose visual orb Ulysses robbed of light. Great Polypheme, of more than mortal might, him young Thusa bore the bright increase of Forces. Forces. Dreaded in the sounds and seas, whom Neptune eyed the bloom of beauty blessed, and in his cave the yielding nymph compressed. For this the god constrains the Greek to roam, a hopeless exile from his native home, from death alone exempt, but cease to mourn. Let all combine to achieve his wished return. Neptune atoned, his wrath shall now refrain, or thwart the synod of the gods in vain. Father and king adored, Minerva cried, since all who in the Olympian bower reside. Now make the wandering Greek their public care, let Hermes the Atlantic isle repair. Bid him, arrived in bright Calypso's court, the sanction of the assembled powers report that wise Ulysses to his native land must speed, obedient to their high command. Meantime, Telemachus, the blooming heir of sea-girt Ithaca, demands my care. Tis mine to form his green, unpractised years in sage debates, surrounded with his peers to save the state, and timely to restrain the bold intrusion of the suitor train, who crowd this his palace, and with lawless power his herds and flocks and festful rites devour. To distant Sparta and the spacious waste of sandy pile the royal youth shall haste, there warm with filial love the cause inquire that from his realm retards his godlike sire. Delivering early to the voice of fame the promise of the great immortal name, she said, The sandals of celestial mold, fledged with ambrosial plumes and rich with gold, surround her feet with these sublime she sails, the aerial space and mounts the winged gales, or earth and ocean wide prepared to soar, her dreaded arm a beamy javelin bore, ponderous and vast, which when her fury burns, proud tyrants humbles, and whole hosts o'erturns. From high Olympus prone her flight she bends, and in the realms of Ithaca descends. Her lineaments divine, the grace disguise of Mentes, form concealed from human eyes Mentes, the monarch of the Taphian land, a glittering spear waved awful in her hand. There, in the portal placed, the heaven-born maid, enormous riot and misrule surveyed on hides of beeves. Before the palace gate, sad spoils of luxury, the suitors sate with rival art and ardor in their mien. At chest they vie to captivate the queen, divining of their loves attending nigh, a menial train the flowing bowl supply. Others apart the spacious hall prepare, and form the costly fear with busy care. Their young Telemachus, his bloomy face glowing celestial sweet with godlike grace. Amid the circle shines but hope and fear, painful vicissitude, his bosom tear. Now imagine in his mind, he sees restored in peace and joy the people's rightful lord. The proud oppressors fly the vengeful sword, while his fond soul these fancied triumphs swelled. The stranger guest the royal youth beheld, grieved that a visitant so long should wait unmarked, un honored at a monarch's gate. Instant he flew with hospital haste, and the new friend with courteous air embraced. Stranger, whoe'er thou art, securely rest, aff affianced in my faith, a ready guest, approached 
Approach the dome, the social banquet share, and then the purpose of thy soul declare. Thus affable and mild the prince proceeds, and to the dome the unknown celestial leads. The spear receiving from the hand, he placed against a column, fair with sculpture graced. Where seemly ranged in peaceful order stood Ulysses' arms now long disused to blood. He led the goddess to the sovereign seat, her feet supported with a stool of state, a purple carpet spread the pavement wide, then drew his seat, familiar to her side, far from the suitor train, a brutal crowd, with insolence and wine, elate and loud, where the free guest unnoted might relate, if happily conscious of his father's fate. The golden ewer, a maid obsequious, obsequious brings replenished. From the cool, translucent springs with copious water, the bright vase supplies a silver lava of capacious size. They wash, the tables in fair order spread, they heap the glittering canisters with bread. Vines of various kinds allure the taste of choicest sort and savor, rich repaste. Rich repast. Delicious wines the attending herald brought, the gold gave luster to the purple draught. Draft. Lured with the vapor of the fragrant feast, and rushed the suitors with voracious haste. Marshaled an order due to each a sewer presence, to bathe his hands a radiant ewer. Luxurious, then they feast, observant round gay stripling youths, with youths the brimming goblets crowned. The rage of hunger quelled, they all advance and form to measure airs the mazy dance. To Phemius was consigned the... C- the corded lyre, whose hand reluctant touched the warbling wire. Phemius, whose voice divine could sweetest sing, high strains responsive to the vocal string. Meanwhile, and whispers to his heavenly guest, his indignation thus the prince expressed, Indulge my rising grief whilst these, my friend, with song and dance the pompous revel end. Light is the dance, and doubly sweet the lays. When for the dear delight another pays his treasured stores those cormorants consume whose bones defrauded of a regal tomb and common turf lie naked on the plain or doomed to welter in the whelming main should he return that troop so blithe and bold with purple robes and raw and stiff with gold precipitant in fear would wing their flight and curse their cumbrous pride's unwieldy weight but ah i dream the appointed hour is fled and hope too long with vain delusion fed death to the rumor of fallacious fame gives to the roll of death his glorious name with venial freedom let me now demand thy name thy lineage and paternal land sincere from whence began thy course recite and to what ship i owe the friendly freight now first to me this visit dost thou deign or numbered in my father's social train all who deserve his choice he made his own and curious much to know he far was known. My birth I boast, the blue-eyed virgin cries, from great Ancialis, renowned and wise. Mentees my name, I rule the Taphian race, whose bounds the deep, circumfluent waves embrace. A duteous people, an industrious isle, to naval arts inured and stormy toil, freighted with iron from my native land, I steer my voyage to the Brucian strand. To gain by commerce, to gain by commerce for the labored mass, a just proportion of refulgent brass. Far from your capital, my ship resides, resides at Riatoris and secure at anchors rides, where waving groves on airy nain grown, supremely tall and shade the deeps below. Thence to revisit your imperial dome, an old hereditary guest I come, your father's friend, Laertes, can relate our faith unspotted and its early date who pressed with heart corroding grief and years to the gay court, a rural shed, praetors, <sighs> praetors, where soul of all his train, a matron sage, supports with homely fond his drooping age, with feeble steps from marshalling his vines, returning sad when toilsome day declines, with friendly speed induced by erring fame, to hell Ulysses' safe return I came. But still the frown of some celestial power with envious joy retards this bliss 
retards the blissful hour. Let not your soul be sunk in sad despair. He lives, he breathes this heavenly vital air. Among a savage race whose shelfy bounds with ceaseless roar the foaming deep surrounds. The thoughts which roll within my ravished breast to me no seer the inspiring gods suggest. Nor skilled, nor studious, with prophetic eye to judge the winged omens of the sky. Yet hear this certain speech, nor deem it vain, though adamant, adamantine bonds the chief restrain. The dire restraint his wisdom will defeat, and soon restore him to his regal seat. But generous youth, sincere and free, declare, are you of manly growth his royal heir? For sure Ulysses in your look appears, the same his features uh, if the same is years. Such was that face on which I dwelt with joy, ere Greece assembled, stemmed the tides to Troy. But parting then for that detested shore, our eyes, unhappy, never greeted more. To prove a genuine birth, the prince replies, on female truth, assenting faith rel relies. Thus manifest of right, I build my claim, sure founded on a fair maternal fame. Ulysses, son, but happier he, whom fate hath placed beneath the storms which toss the great. Happier the son, whose houry sire is blessed with humble affluence and domestic rest. Happier than I, to future empire born, but doomed a father's wretched fate to mourn. To whom, with aspect mild, the guest divine. O oh, true descendant of a sceptred line, the gods a glorious fate from anguish free to chase Penelope's increased decree. But say, yon jovial troops so gaily dressed, is this a bridal or a friendly feast? Or from their deed, I rightlier may divine, unseemly flown with insolence and wine, unwelcome revelers whose lawless joy pains the sage ear and hurts the sober eye. Magnificence of old, the prince replied, beneath our roof with virtue could reside. Unblamed abundance crowned the royal board. What time this dome revered her prudent lord, who now so heaven decrees is doomed to mourn. Bitter constraint, erroneous and forlorn, better the chief on Ilion's hostile plain, had fallen surrounded with his warlike train, or safe returned the race of glory past, new to his friend's embrace and breathed his last. Then grateful Greece with streaming eyes would raise historic marbles to record his praise. His praise, eternal on the faithful stone, had the transmissive honor graced his son, now snatched by harpies to the dreary coast, sunk as the hero and his glory lost, vanished at once unheard of and unknown, and I, he, and I his heir in misery alone. Nor for a dear lost father only flow the filial tears, but woe succeeds to woe to tempt the spouseless queen with amorous wiles. Resort the nobles from the neighboring isles, from Samos, circled the Ionian main, Dulichium and Zacynthus, Sylvan reign, Evan with presumptuous hope her bed to ascend, the lords of Ithaca their right pretend. She seems attentive to their pleaded vows, her heart detesting what her ear allows. They vain expectance of the bridal hour, my stores in riotous expense devour. In feast and dance the mirthful months employ, and mediate my doom to crown their joy. With tender pity touched, the goddess cried, Soon may kind heaven a sure relief provide. Soon may your sire discharge the vengeance due, and all your wrongs with proud oppressors rue. Oh, in that portal should the chief appear, each hand tremendous with the brazen spear, in radiant panoply his limbs encased. For so of old my father's court he graced, when social mirth unbent his serious soul o'er the full banquet and the sprightly bull. He then from Ephire, the fair domain of Ilus, sprung from Jason's royal strain, measured a length of seas, a tollsome length in vain, for voyaging to learn the direful art, to taint with deadly drugs the barbed dart observant of the gods and sternly just eilis refused to impart the baneful trust with friendlier zeal my father's soul was fired the drugs he knew and gave the boon desired appeared he now with such heroic port as then conspicuous at the taphian court soon should you boaster cease their haughty strife or each atone his guilty love with life but of his wished return the care resign but 
be future vengeance to the powers divine. My sentence here, with stern distaste avowed, to their own districts drive the suitor crowd. When next the morning warms the purple east, convoke the peerage and the gods attest, the sorrows of your inmost soul relate and form sure plans to save the sinking state should second love a pleasing flame inspire and the chaste queen connubial rights require dismissed with honor let her hence repair to great icarius whose paternal care will guide will guide her passion and reward her choice with wealthy dower and bridal gifts of price then let this dictate of my love prevail instant to foreign realms prepare to sell to learn your father's fortunes fame may prove or omen voice the messenger of jove propitious to the search direct your toil through the wide ocean first to sandy pile of nestor our sage his doomed demand thence speed your voyage to the spartan strand for young atrides to the achaean coast arrived the last of all the victor host if yet ulysses views the light forbear till the fleet hours restore the circling year but if his soul hath winged the destined flight inhabitant of deep disastrous night homeward with pious speed repass the main to the pale shade funeral rites ordain plant the fair column o'er the vacant grave a hero's honors let the hero have with decent grief the royal dead deplored for the chaste queen select an equal lord then let revenge your daring mind employ by fraud or force the suitor train destroy and starting into manhood scorn the boy hast thou not heard how young orestes fired with great revenge immortal praise acquired his virgin sword agisthus agisthus agisthus's veins imbrued the murderer fell and blood atoned for blood O greatly blessed with every blooming grace the equal steps the path the paths of glory trace. Join to that royal youth's your rival name and shine eternal in the sphere of fame. But my associates now my stay deplore, impatient on the horse, resounding shore. Thou, heedful of advice, secure proceed. My praise the precept is, be thine the deed. The counsel of my friend, the youth rejoined, imprints conviction on my graceful mind. So father speak persuasive speech and mild, their sage experience to their to the favorite child, but since to part for sweet refection due, the genial viands let my train renew, and the rich pledge of plighted faith receive. Were they the heir of Ithaca to give, to fur the promised boon the goddess cries, celestial azure brightening in her eyes, and let me now regain the Reithrian port from Tamis. Return your royal court, I shall revisit, and that pledge receive, and gifts memorial of our friendship leave. Abrupt with eagle speed, she cut the sky, instant invisible to mortal eye. Then first he recognized the ethereal guest, wonder and joy alternate fire his breast. Heroic thoughts infused his heart dilate, revolving much his father's doubtful fate. At length composed, he joined the suitor throng. Hushed in attention to the warbled song, his tender theme the charming lyrist chose, Minerva's anger and the dreadful woes, which voyaging from Troy the victors bore, while storms vindictive intercept the shore. The shrilling airs the vaulted roof rebounds, reflecting to the queen the silver sounds. With grief renewed, the weeping fair descends, their sovereign's step a virgin train attends. A veil of richest texture wrought, she wears and silent the joyous hall repairs. There from the portal with her mild command, thus gently checks the minstrel's tuneful hand. Phemius, let acts of gods and heroes old, what ancient bards in hall and bower have told, a tempered to the lyre your voice employ. Such the blessed ear will drink with silent joy, but oh, forbear that dear disastrous name to sorrow sacred and secure of fame. My bleeding bosom sickens at the sound, and every piercing note inflicts a wound. Why, dearest object of my duteous love, replied the prince, will you bard reprove? Oft Jove's ethereal rays, resistless fire, the chanter's soul and raptured song inspire, instinct divine, nor blame severe his choice, warbling the Grecian woes with heart and voice. For novel lays attract our ravished ears, but old the man with inattention hears, patient, 
permit the sadly pleasing strain. Familiar now with grief, your tears refrain. And in the public woe, forget your own. You weep not for a perished Lord alone. What Greeks knew wandering in the Stygian gloom. Wish your Ulysses shared an equal doom. Your widowed hours apart with female toil and various labors of the loom beguile. Their rule from palace cares, remote and free. That care to man belongs, and most to me. Mature beyond his years, the queen admires his sage reply, and with her train retires. Then swelling sorrows burst their former bounds. With echoing grief afresh the dome resounds, till Pallas, piteous of her plainful of her plaintive cries, in slumber closed her silver streaming eyes. Meantime, rekindled at the royal charms, tumultuous love each beating bosom warms. In temperate rage, a wordy war began, but bold Telemachus assumed the man. Instant, he cried, your female discord end. Ye deedless boasters and the song attend. Obey that sweet compulsion, nor profane with dissonance the smooth, melodious strain. Pacific now prolong the jovial feast, but when the dawn reveals the rosy east, I, to the peers assembled, shall propose the firm resolve. I hear and few disclose, no longer live the cankers of my court, all to your several states with speed resort. Waste and wild riot what your land allows, there ply the early feast and late carouse. Late carouse. But if to honor lost, tis still decreed. For you, my bull shall flow, my flock shall bleed. Judge and revenge my right, impartial Jove. By him and all the immortal thrones above, a sacred oath. Each proud oppressor slain shall with inglorious gore this marble stain. Awed by the prince, thus haughty, bold, and young. Rage gnawed the lip, and wonder chained the tongue. Silence at length the gay Antinous broke. Constrained a smile and thus ambiguous spoke. What God to your untutored youth affords this headlong torrent of amazing words? May Jove delay thy reign and cumber late, so bright a genius with the toils of state. Those toils, Telemachus serene replies, have charms with all their weight to allure the wise. Fast by the throne obsequious fame resides, and wealth incessant rolls her golden tides. Nor let Antinous rage of strong desire of wealth and fame a youthful bosom fire, elect by Jove his delegate of sway. With joyous pride the summons I'd obey, when e'er Ulysses roams the realm of night, should Factious power dispute thy lineal right. Some other Greeks a fairer claim may plead to your pretense their title would proceed. At least the scepter lost, I should, I still should reign sole o'er my vassals and domestic train. To this, Eurymachus, to heaven alone, refer the choice to fill the vacant throne. Your patrimonial stores in peace possess, undoubted all your filial claim confess. Your private right should impious power invade. The peers of Ithaca would arm and aid, but say that stranger, guest who late withdrew. What and from whence his name and lineage shew, his grave demeanor and majestic grace, speak him descended of non-vulgar race. Did he some loin of ancient right require, or came forerunner of your sceptered sire? O son of Polybus, the prince replies, No more my sire will glad these longing eyes, the queen's fond hope, inventive rumor, cheers. Or vain diviner's dreams divert her fears. That strange guest, the Taphian realm obeys, a realm defended with encircling seas. Mentes, an ever honored name of old, high in Ulysses, high in Ulysses's social list enrolled. Thus he, though conscious of the ethereal guest, answered evasive of the sly request. Meantime, the lyre rejoins the sprightly lay. Love ditted airs and dance conclude the day. But when the star of eve with golden light adorned the matron brow of sable night, the mirthful train dispersing quit the court and to their several domes to rest resort. A towering structure to the palace joined. To this his steps the thoughtful prince inclined in his pavilion there to sleep repairs the lighted torch the sage Euryclea bears, daughter of Ops, the just Pisoner's son, for twenty beeves the great Laertes won, in rosy prime with charms attractive graced, honored by him a gentle lord and chaste. 
with dear esteem too wise, with jealous strife, to taint the joys of sweet connubial life, soul with Telemachus her service ends. A child she nursed him, and a man attends, whilst to his couch himself the prince addressed. The duteous dame received the purple vest, the purple vest with decent care disposed. The silver ring she pulled, the door reclosed. The bolt, obedient to the silken cord, to the strong staples, in most depth restored, secured the vaults, secured the valves. They're wrapped in silent shade. Pensive, the rules the goddess gave he weighed. Stretched on the downy fleece, no rest he knows, and in his raptured soul the vision glows.